on to East Africa. Um, Kenya, you know this little East African country. It's often feted as a home of M-Pesa, the groundbreaking mobile money transfer service. The thing is, what's often forgotten amidst the buzz of success of M-Pesa is that the service was on very thin legal ground in its early days and it faced the very real risk of being shut down by regulators and it came literally this close. Now a decade later, obviously, to balance between the need to protect consumers but not cripple innovation, the Capital Market Authority is now setting up what it calls a regulatory sandbox. Earlier on, I spoke to the CEO of a fintech startup here in Kenya, which is a potential beneficiary of these new rules. We're trying to see, can we justify the cost of getting a license? Now, how we operate is, we operate as um, agents for licensed entities, mm -hmm. um, including commercial banks, and you know, under the agency agreements provided by the central bank, mm -hmm. um, investment banks and brokers, and fund managers, who are all allowed to have agents, mm -hmm. and whose capital requirements or regulatory requirements are minimal, mm -hmm. um, falling under the regulatory requirements of their principal parties. Yeah. For us to transition from an agent into a principal, for instance, in the case where we wanted to be able to offer our own products, mm -hmm. We would need possibly to grow our turnover by about 900 times to justify just that incremental cost. Um, an investment banking license requires that you put about 50 million shillings, about $500,000, mm -hmm. into capital requirements, and then you need to have maybe another $250,000 for acquiring a trading seat on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, and possibly another $250,000 for the first year of compliance. So just basically, that's a million dollars all in. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. And that's prior to actually marketing expenses, growth, trying to acquire customers. That's before even I come in and say, okay, here's my $1,000 or 500 or whatever, exactly. invest this for me. Yeah, so that needs to sit, sit aside as, as, you know, that's capital provision. Mm -hmm. And you find the difference between what the broker makes and what I make as an agent for the broker mm -hmm. is 0.5%. Your business has grown fairly rapidly over the last couple of years. Now that this regulatory sandbox has come into play, what what changes for your business? What makes what's different for you now? Um, I think one of the things that we've done so far is to look at regulation and say how do we actually achieve what the client requires without necessarily getting regulated as such? How do we operate and, and provide a very simple, beautiful user experience for the client, mm -hmm. uh, which is extremely difficult to do because what happens is once you get regulated, uh, it comes with a straight jacket set of requirements. You really can't do a lot of things outside of um, the way the law has prescribed them. Mm -hmm. So, which means for us as a technology company, which is innovating every three or four days, we're coming up with new ideas, we want to roll them out, test them, having to go back to the regulator and say, hey, and then spend nine months waiting for them to approve something that, number one, they quite typically don't have the framework for. So, they have to develop some kind of framework, either to um, remove us from the regulation or to approve it. Give me, give me an example. Artificial intelligent, um, intelligence driven robo advisory, mm -hmm. for instance. So instead of getting human advisors to sit and tell you, okay, you should buy this money market fund, mm -hmm. we actually build a bit of artificial intelligence, which means you can access it via Telegram or WhatsApp mm -hmm. and ask it, you know, you'll have a conversation with a robot on the other side, which is helping us build a profile of the kinds of investments that you should make. Mm -hmm. And so we can then roll out advisory on that. Now, we would like to test this. But there is, for us to do this, we either have to be a financial advisor and get a financial advisory license or um, a fund manager in order to do that. And of um, course, the CMA will turn around and say, hang on, if it's one thing if, if an advisor gives you advice and then it backfires, if you exactly, want to sue the yeah. advisor, that's a different story. But if it's a robot on the other side of the fence, you know, how so do you sue a couple of lines of code? You could sue the company that's essentially pushing this. But the ability to even see whether this will be taken up is something that you'd require to actually have been licensed. Mm -hmm. Now, once you go back to the CMA and sometimes even to having to require that the Association of Stockbrokers and Investment Banks actually approve some of these things, then it becomes an extremely arduous process. Now, the regulatory sandbox makes it very easy for us because it, f based on the premise, the premise of what the, the Capital Markets is, Authority is looking at is that you should be able to come in with these ideas and say, we'd like to test this out. And there's no obligation for them to actually, number one, say yes, or number two, um, require that you get this license. Yeah. They'll give you a period of time where you can actually reach out to the users, do somewhat of a controlled public experiment mm -hmm. where they're also observing what you're doing, and then the results of which then um, determine whether you get a license or whether you do need a license or you can actually roll out that product.